down 14 nothing to the Rock. It's hard to come back against a great team like them. As the kick away, and this will be Byron McCoy from the six yard line. McCoy got the four five speed, takes it up near the 25 yard line, and the Jays need to find some offense here quickly. Coming up uh, after we're done, Chad Harberts will get in his car, race <laughs> back to the studios, and do this show. And we're not paying mileage anymore. Oh, really? I'm working for concession stand hot dogs at this point. What's going to be on the show? We've got highlights of a dozen big games from around the city, including the big small school matchup tonight, St. Pius X at Pembroke Hill. Kevin, game. in that game, there were two touchdowns in the first minute 52. It was 7-7. Seven to seven. Beeson went 80 yards, and then Cashmore went 75 oh, in the first minute. So it could be a shootout then. It could huh? be a shootout in the small schools, plus 11 other big games from around the city. Yeah, a lot of people counted Pius out after that shaky start, but Rick Byers has those guys rolling. First and 10 for Carroll, short drop. Fires the slant, complete for a first down as Blake Willard, the tight end, making the catch. And of course, we know. Uh, Blake's older sister, Lacey, she worked with you on the high school roundup. Absolutely. Lacey down at Mizzou, a freshman down there now, but she still keeps track of the Liberty Blue Jays, and she's liking seeing what her brother's done all year long. I mean, he had some big games early on and now making a big catch in their biggest game of the year against Blue Springs. His 28th catch of the season. He has four TD receptions. He was the backup quarterback last year, and one of the seven-on-seven -seven summer camps they were at, they said, we need a tight end. He came in and played, and... Coach Cahill, their offensive coordinator, said, uh, Coach, this guy's pretty good. And Hanson said, I don't know about him. Pass complete to Byron McCoy, breaking free, turning on the Jets. McCoy bounced out of bounds inside the 30, down near the 29-yard line in Blue Springs territory. There's the murderous speed of Byron McCoy. Well, this is how you counter the pressure that Blue Springs can put on you. You throw the short pass, and you let your tail back take off with it. Dan, you know this is a wideout. If they bring six or seven guys at you, if you can get one of your receivers three or four yards on the field, it's probably man coverage. Now it's a foot race. Oh, definitely, and especially when you're running those underneath cover, uh, underneath routes where people can get picked off and there's multiple bodies bumping into each other. A big play like that can always happen when you're running against man coverage and get a little bit of blitz inside. Carroll a little shaken up, was hobbled. I guarantee you he will not come out of the game. He said, we've never beaten Blue Springs since I've been there. I want these guys tonight. He will play uh, injury or not. Carroll with the pump, fires, and it's complete. Bullard, another catch, close to the first down. you got to like this combination of Carroll to Woolard here. It's another short step drop, and that's so big against this pressure defense. And what you got to do, and what, and what you've seen on both of these last two plays is a little bit of a pick action with the outside and inside receivers. And, and that throws off the defense just a bit. If you can get them to hesitate one step, you're always going to have big plays like that. Well, this is a huge drive for the Jays. They have to come back here and answer here. You want to put some points on the board. You do not want to go into that halftime locker room on the road with a goose egg on the scoreboard. And now a timeout taken by Liberty. They have two left. And you look at the 35-year-old coach of the Blue Springs Wildcats. Former KU quarterback Kelly Dono plays high school ball at Harrisonville. And there you see his offense averaging 33.6. They're giving up 9.6. But as Chad mentioned earlier, not blowing anybody out this year. And Kelly talked to me. He said, listen, every night we play with the defending state champions, we get everybody's best shot. And I said, boy, that sounds exactly like Gene Weir at Olathe North. They take some tough games. Especially when you're in this league that is so top-heavy. You've got kind of the four halves and the four have-nots. And, and Winnetonka is new to the league. Truman has struggled the last couple of years. Lee Summit, Lee Summit North a little bit down. But I'm telling you what, if you're one of the four have-nots, you can make your whole season taking out one of the guys that are going for the conference championship. And that is why those top four teams you see there, Liberty, Blue Springs, Blue Springs South, and Oak Park, find it such a grind every single week because those ones at the bottom want to make their season by knocking them off. That was not the case this year. These teams knock each other off here in the district. Fourth play of the drive, starting back in the 26 here. First and 10, Carroll fires, and in and out of the intended receiver's hands, Chase Gwen. Ball a little behind him, and he couldn't reel that one in. It'll be second down and 10. Well, actually, this is not a bad throw by the quarterback. When you're running those slant routes as a wide receiver, you always have to be ready 
for that ball to be on your back hip because if that quarterback can throw the ball a little bit out in front of you, those are the balls that are normally tipped or intercepted. So you have to be ready for that ball on the back hip. Not a bad throw by the quarterback there. And what you saw there is Blue Springs did not bring the house like they had, but they just brought four guys because Liberty has switched to the short drop and the quick pass. Exactly. Second down at 10, Carroll setting up the screen, and it's going to be intercepted. No, broken up by Darius Witherspoon, nearly intercepted as they were trying to set up the screen it, to Sharp. It might be a pick and, and a, well, now the Arkansas didn't complete it. First, I thought they were saying pick and no fumble. That was a close one. Well, I think I think it was a very good call. Uh, even though he had the ball in his hands, they seemed like they were wrestling with it from the beginning, and it was bouncing around. No, no real control. That's yeah. a great job for the running back, turning it into a defensive back. Yeah, I would I would never run this play, and I'll tell you why. I saw Winnetonka run it two weeks ago against Blue Springs, and they completed the pass, and Witherspoon lit up the running back who made the catch and turned and got leveled by Darius. I would never throw that to Darius' side. Third down and 10. Here comes Darius on a blitz. Picked up Carroll, throwing the fade to Willard in the end zone. Can't get it. Incomplete. Really liking this quarterback play. That ball was thrown in the box. I know we've talked about in the past about the box being four yards from the sideline in and where the receiver needs to get to, where the DB can't get to, and leave that space there and let the quarterback throw it right into that spot. That's a that's a great throw. Just a little bit deep, but a great throw. Carroll continues to nap. Does he remind you with his throwing angle, little Bernie Kozar, where the ball's coming out there. Remember, he used to play for the Cleveland Browns. A little bit of a three-quarter action. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing here. Well, it's going to be fourth and ten. They will go for it. No field goal here. Out of the shotgun. Carroll firing. And the pass is caught by Gentry. Takes it near the goal line. Flags on the play. It'll be first and goal for Liberty. But once again, flags on the play. What a catch by Jay Gentry. It's going to be a pass interference, but I'm not sure if it'll be offensive or defensive. It's going to be defensive. That's that's big. That's big. They'll take the catch and the completion, but that's just great football on fourth down. Great job. When you're going across the middle or inside routes, use your body as a shield. A lot of guys, a lot of receivers always talk about catching the ball with your hands. You can only do that but so often. When you're in, when you're in traffic, you use your body as a shield and you have that extra offender when the ball comes to you and that defense has to jump over you to get to him. He did a great job there. First and goal from the one now. Sharp and McCoy in the backfield behind Carroll. This will be Sharp, the big guy, into the end zone. Touchdown! His seventh touchdown in the last three weeks. A new ball game now. And this is what Liberty needed. They needed a long drive. They needed to finish with seven points, and they got it. They threw the ball very well. Short pass, short pass, short pass. They get it down there. When you get down to the one-yard line, you give it to your horse. You put it in the hands of the guy who has found pay dirt, in this case, Billy Sharp, and he pounds it in. Great job of the Liberty offense to, to, to watch the length of the field, 14 down on the road against a tough Blue Springs team, and to come out and go no holds barred, pass the ball down the field, and make this make their presence known here. Adam Cross it with the extra point. There's the scoring drive. They went 74 yards in a minute and a half. The big play, fourth and ten. They find Gentry takes it down to the one and sharp. Now has 13 touchdowns on the season. Who would have thunk that? The guy was playing the fullback position, and Byron McCoy was scoring all the touchdowns in the early part of the season, but Sharp's come on and been a huge touchdown maker for this team. And Liberty has had good fullbacks the last five, six years, but those guys have mainly been blocking backs. They've gotten a share of carries here and there, but mainly their job is to kind of help clear the hole. But this year, Billy Sharp has stepped up because Byron McCoy has been a little bit banged up. Uh, we've seen that years past Liberty, but Billy Sharp has said, okay, if my guy's banged up and he doesn't have to carry as much, I'll take it myself. I'll get us into the end zone. I, those two touchdowns last week were both big-time touchdowns. They were just one-yard plunges, but they were needed scores against a good defense last week, too. And he rushed for 132 yards against a very good Jaguar defense at Blue Springs South. The week before that, 145 against Truman, so he has really stepped in and done a great job. Going in for McCoy is the kick away. And it's muffed. Picked off the ground. And this is Jarrett Morris down the sidelines. And a good job of the special teams by Liberty to give them the long field here. So let's see what Blue Springs can come up with. They got the 14-0 lead, maybe relaxed a little bit. And the Jays 
all the way down the field as you take a look at the rushing numbers and uh, Andrew Tuggle with the majority of those yards has a touchdown run tonight. What do you think, Dan? And I say just stay on the ground. If you're Blue Springs, you're out rushing them 93 zip. You're running the ball well and, and you're running the time off the clock. Uh, Liberty's doing a good job in the air, but they got to get that rushing uh, going. Five and a half to go in your second quarter here. Tuggle the lone setback here. On the 21-yard line, first and 10. Sessler goes in motion, toss it to Tuggle on the cutback. Not much as Josh Lucas got in there and got his hands on Tuggle and slowed him down. Not much on that play. Well, it's hard to arm tackle a guy as powerful as Andrew Tuggle, but that time a nice job, at least getting him slowed down Still, some teammates could come help out. This is actually a crucial series for this Liberty defense. If they can stuff them now, get the ball back, and, and even if they don't put points on the ball or just establish another drive going into halftime, it could be crucial for the turn of events in the second half. Second down and nine. Dean fires, complete, and it's a first down. As pass is complete to Brandon Sessler, and they'll move the chains. Stenson Dean showing what he does well, which is drop back, nice, sharp, accurate arm, short pass, they turn into a first down. Last catch correction, it was Cale Brewster on the reception, and it is a first down, 11 yards to the senior, Cale Brewster. Ball out to the 34-yard line here, first and 10 now for the Wildcats. Last year, the perfect season. Beat Rockers twice on the state title in St. Louis. Swinging out Mayfield. This play has worked all night. And it'll go for nearly 10 up to the 45-yard line in Liberty territory as Liberty not adjusting to this play. Well, it's just a great job. Basically, this is just like an extended handoff or a pitch play. Get it out to one of your faster guys with a soft coverage by the defense. You're always, you're, you're always going to get at least five yards on that play, and they did a great job of getting 10. And Dan, that's been big. I mean, this is kind of filtered down from the NFL. Years ago, when you needed one or two yards, you'd hand it to your, your running back up the middle. But now, you throw it out there quick, your wide receiver can do the same thing. Well, what you see is in the NFL, you see a lot more bigger wide receivers. So what uh, you look back into the Chiefs history in 97 when you had uh, Mark McMillan out there and so on, you get a chance to run over those little defensive backs. Win Scott with the sack on Stinson Dean, and they'll lose yardage back to the... 40-yard line. It looked like a coverage sack there. Stenson Dean had plenty of time to try and find somebody. The, the unfortunate thing for Blue Springs, there was nobody open. Liberty's D-backs doing a great job of closing down on all the wideouts. Well, once you get beat deep like they did last time, they tend to cover those guys deep, and that's why those, those little short routes that we had in, in the beginning of this drive were so wide open. These guys are a little bit leery of the speed of Blue Springs. Second down and 13 after the Winscott sack. They run a quarterback option, and Stinson Dean whirling. Takes it out to the 50-yard line, a gain of about eight. And it's going to be third down and five yards to go here. Stinson Dean has shown a lot of toughness running the football tonight. Well, with, with the weapons he has around him, if he can continue to throw the ball like he is, uh, he's going to have a lot more openings like he did. And, and being able to stack the three wide receivers on the left-hand side, spread out the defense, and take what they give you. Absolutely. Kelly does a good job. Kelly Dono does a great job of disguising his plays by doing things like stacking three wide receivers close together on the left side and then running the option out of it, giving himself a lot of different things he can do out of that set. Blue Springs, one for three on third down. Spacey now third down and five near the midfield strike. Run it to the short side with Tuggle, blown up. Jimmy Masters got him around the waist, and they will lose yardage. There is a flag back near where the contact was made. There's big Jimmy Masters there, number 58. I think we have one of the wide receivers move a little bit early. Dead ball, illegal procedure on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. That's a big break for Blue Springs there because they were going to be forced to punt the ball, but instead it's a dead ball penalty. They get a second shot here 
at third down after Liberty had come up with the big stop. And the way they've been passing the ball, yeah, that is a, that is a crucial play for Blue Springs. Liberty has to make a big stop here. Plus the clock keeps ticking. We're under two minutes now to halftime, and, and that's why Liberty's going to stop it. I mean, the free play helps out Blue Springs in a number of ways where the penalty helps them out. It's a little bit late to call that timeout. You might as well, I mean, with them up at the ball ready to make the play, you might as well go through the play, save it just in case they get a first down or it, uh, if they get a big play. So the last run by Tuggle nullified with the penalty. So it'll be third down and 10 after the timeout. This is timeout number two for Kelly Donahoe and the Blue Springs Wildcats who will wrap up their uh, district next week against their Crosstown rivals, Blue Springs South. That's always a barn burner of a game. Unbelievable. You know, you remember last year, South had them down 14 to 3 at the break, and they were going to pull off just the upset of the year. And Blue Springs came out after the intermission, had that long touchdown. What was it 99 yards? Yeah. They marched on the field and scored, ended up putting that game away late, and then went on and won the whole state championship. Really, Blue Springs South gave them their closest game. 15-14 yep. was the final. Donahoe was the Metro Sports Missouri Coach of the Year last year. 153 to go before half. Third down and 10 after the penalty. Dean on the roll. Lucas in his face. Gets away from Josh. And now Jimmy Masters in his face. And now he's finally wrapped up. Like Brian Hamrick finally got him. Making Winscott with the sack. As the jerseys are getting muddy now. And Josh Winscott, their top sack man, gets another one. Well, what's that 44 white remind you of coming through there? Jason Richenberger type play, shooting through there and pursuing the quarterback before he could even set up to try and throw. He originally went to Nebraska. I understand he's at Northern Iowa it's now. He's at Mama Mater now, Northern Iowa after transferring over. And because it's a transfer down from Division I to Division I AA, he can play right away. There's right. no year sitting out, so Richenberger uh, at his alma mater. I'm, I'm wondering, I haven't talked to Pat Hansen, but Pat Hansen being a Panther as well, I'm thinking he might, might have had a little input into that. I would think so. There's Curtis Cooper, who played for the Wildcats last year and had a big game. He's now at Northern Iowa. So. Well, and I'll tell you who's starring up there right now is Marlis Mays, the fine right, wide receiver out of North Kansas City. Yeah. He's their top wideout and having a great year up there. There's more and more guys we're finding out of this area that are discovering one double-A football. You've got Royal Whitaker and Joel Samberski and, and Justin Kramer at Southern Illinois. We're going to see on Metro Sports in a couple of weeks. Hey, one double-A, you've got just as much chance to play for a national championship as you do at 1A. They like the dome up there, don't they? Absolutely they do. <laughs> Uni dome. <laughs> it is cold up there. It is cold. <laughs> you need a dome. <laughs> what that punny top. Oh, just got it out of there. As Aaron Pearson doing the punting, Byron McCoy doing the returning, going nowhere as he's taken down at the 31-yard line. 29 yards on the punt, but Aaron Pearson lucky to get it out of there. And now with 1.22 to go in your half, Liberty football, but this was almost a disaster for the Wildcats here. Actually, he turned away. Uh, one of the techniques they teach on the special teams is to leap out to the ball, keep your hands low. Got uh, that that def defender right there went a little bit high, had his hands a little bit high, didn't dive out to the ball, could have made a big play. Well, and the punter turned away from what could have been a roughing the kicker penalty. He kind of let him off the hook there. Well, the thing that the punters have to realize, they have to go to acting school. Most, pun <laughs> most great punters are very good actors. <laughs> Carroll on first and ten out of the shotgun, finding Chase Gwen at the 35, and he runs out of bounds nicely to stop the clock near the 40-yard line. Close to the first down. Clock stop with 1.15 to go before half. Good time play there. Get a quick gain of yardage. Get out of bounds. Stop that clock. Try and march down here. You've got a good field goal kicker. If you can just get down there about the 20, 25 yard line right before halftime. If you don't punch it in, you got a shot at it. Adam Cross it is long this year is 47 yards. So he can definitely boot it. But last week he struggled. He was 0 for 2. It is a first down. Keep in mind, last week, Scott Carroll was two for eight for 29 yards. Now he's throwing it all the time, and this one batted away. As 
job of coming through there. Adam Reed, who is the son of Tony Reed and former Chiefs fan, uh, you know, Chiefs fans will know that, remember Tony Reed running back for the Chiefs? This is his baby boy here. Well, this is one definite way you can stop that quick three-step drop or three-step uh, pass routes is to get the blitz in there. Now, what Liberty has to do is if they're going to show those blitzes, they have to throw the fade route and get the ball up over that first wave of uh, pass rush. And coming in with your head up so you know when the pass is going to be released so you can get up in the air and try and knock it down. Exactly. Great job by the defense there. Tony Reed played from 1977 to 1980 for the Kansas City Chiefs, number 32. Firing, Chase Quinn through his hands, incomplete, and it'll be third down and 10. I like that play there, too. If Gwynn hauls that in, he's got a shot to just go right down the middle of the field with it, but his break looked a little slow, and then the ball was on top in, in a hurry because Scott Carroll can bring that 94-mile-an-hour fastball when he has to, and Gwynn couldn't haul it in. Or anything that, the one thing, the one rule about a wide receiver, anything that touches your hands should be caught. Doesn't matter if it's high, low, if it touches your fingertips, it should be caught. It's a great uh, scheme by the Liberty offense to have those guys picking each other, three guys in the same area. It's confusing the Bull Springs defense. Third down and 10 out of the shotgun for Carroll. Last time, gunning deep down the field to Gentry. It's broken up. Nice break on the ball by Chris Miller, finding an ankle problem, but he had the catch-up speed that time. A little bit longer ball. The guy had him beat off the line of scrimmage. They kind of shuffled. That's what happens when you constantly run throughout the game. Three-step drop, five-step passes, uh, receiving yards, uh, five-step outs. Then you go deep. Those guys are used to settling on the short stuff, and they can't get out of that back pedal long enough or quick enough to get back to that deep route. And the second week in the row that Scott Carroll's had a guy deep down the field, and the pass has come up maybe a yard short. He had the one last week that was knocked down that could have been a touchdown. Running time for Adam Crossett, sending it toward the sideline. Brewster will field on one hop at the 25. Makes the first guy miss. Kale Brewster, nice return near the 44-yard line. 48.9 seconds to go here in your half, and Blue Springs, uh, another chance to get some points here. It'll be interesting to see what Blue Springs will do right here with 48 seconds left. Uh, will they go for the home run? Will they try for the big play? Will they be a little bit more conservative? Because you have uh, uh, both sides of the coin here. If, if you do anything too drastic, you may give the momentum shift back to Liberty going into the locker room. But don't rule out the gadget play. Blue Springs runs the flea flicker as well as anybody in the city. 19-yard return as number 19 goes back to pass. Now hands it off to Tuggle, breaking tackles. Tuggle into Liberty territory with a 12-yard first down run. Kelly, Kelly Donahoe is inventive. I mean, he does things that nobody else does, and it's hard to defense him. He has his quarterback roll out and hands it back across his body to the running back who appears to be blocking. Great play, great, great safe play to start the drive. Keep the Liberty defense off kilter. Screen it out, Tuggle makes the catch and runs out for short yardage and stops the clock with 32 and a half seconds to go here in your second quarter. Very, very smart play by the running back getting out of bounds. You can't, sometimes you can't even teach the NFL players to do that. <laughs> and you got guys in high school right now being smart with the clock management. And Pat Hansen just looking on saying, do not give up any points here. We cannot afford to be down more than a touchdown going into intermission. Second down at eight now. Stenson Dean with time, gunning deep for the big 6-6 wide out. Hill with the catch, first and goal, Wildcats. What a catch by the basketball star for the Wildcats. I saw the play before it happened. I knew when I, earlier Liberty had, had cover two with safety help. Right on that play, they left that guy out on an island, had the big guy out there. Nothing to lose on Blue Springs' side of the ball. If they throw it up there, it's incomplete. No big deal. If it's intercepted, it's like a uh, punt. Great job, great call on Blue Springs. And this is the basketball star. I watched him on the first day of practice this year in the wide receiver drills, just going up and snatching things down. They threw balls to him hard, threw him places where it would be hard to get to, and he can really get up and get that ball. Six foot six, 
and he goes up and he can get it. I mean, that is a dangerous weapon. Oh, definitely a danger, dangerous weapon. You don't want to leave it, especially at this time of the game. You don't want to have your corner. I don't care how good or how much confidence you have in him. You don't want him to be out there on an island by himself like that. Second to go from the two. Tuggle escorted in. Touchdown, Blue Springs. That's just a great job of time management by Blue Springs to get the ball back with not a lot of time to work with and do the right thing to get it down the field quickly. And that extra seven points going into intermission is really going to pay off. Oh, it's crucial. It's crucial. I think uh, questionable call, questionable on, on uh, the Liberty side of the uh, of the ball on the defense to have that guy out there. I would really question that. When you have a 6'6 guy, you have nothing to lose on Blue Springs side of the ball. I'll tell you what, if you're Liberty, I mean, or if you're playing them, you got to have a 6'6 D-back to go up against this guy because he is just too good. And there's just no 6'6 D-backs in the city since, uh, what's the name, Excelsior Springs left. Since Jared left over at Excelsior, that's 14 picks that year. Five plays, 55 yards, and Darius Hill, a key contributor with his 39-yard catch to set him up first and goal. And the one thing, you, the only thing you can do to counteract that is to have the corner bump and run him up front and have a safety behind him. That's the only thing you can do to defend it. But it's still a great play by the quarterback and the wide receiver. And Tuggles' second touchdown of the night. 21-7, Blue Springs, Darius Hill. Very good basketball player. Averaged 10 points, six rebounds, three block shots a game. And Blue Springs had a very good basketball season this past winter. Absolutely. They're, you know, Frank Wheeler does a great job with their basketball squad every year. They go down to some of the toughest tournaments, like the Joplin Tournament, and play some of the biggest teams in the state year in and year out besides the Big 8 schedule. And I think they're going to be good again this year, and he's one reason why. Squip kick down the field. And Blue Jays will run it up. Rubs. The short return, and the Blue Jays will get it back with 11.3 seconds to go, trailing by two touchdowns. Chad, I told you before this game, I thought 21 points in a ball game like this is a huge amount. Yeah, I wouldn't have been surprised if, the, if this total would have been 21 by like a 14-7 ball game. 21 for one team is big for Blue Springs. In fact, I really think Liberty has to try and air it out here. You've got Scott Carroll. He's got one of the best arms in the city. I think you've got to try and go one-on-one -on -one and throw it way down the field and see what happens. They'll line up under center here, turn and give it off to Billy Sharp right up the middle. And Billy turns out about seven yards on the play, and that'll wind out your second quarter clock here. All the fans in purple tonight loving things as Kelly Donahoe's team leading 21 to 7 at halftime as he talks things over with his quarterback Stinson Dean in this second round district game in the class 6 district number 8 and the defending state champions looking pretty good tonight here Chad well absolutely Blue Springs is not going to give up that title without a fight even though it's in a different class this year and they're showing in our field we are pretty good. I mean, they don't lose here very often. They no. lost to Rockhurst early in the season. They lost to Rockhurst a couple of years ago, but it, it's very rare that Blue Springs loses on their home field. They don't want to do it tonight. What about Liberty? I see Billy Sharp a little hobbled. He's been their leading rusher the last two weeks. That's not a good sign for the Jays, but what about the Jays for the second half here? Well, they have to come out and make some big plays. The, 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 the one drive that they established, they nickel and dime down the field, which is great, but Blue Springs is counteracting that with a lot of big plays. This is That's what Liberty has to go into the locker room, make some big plays, quiet these fans down, and get back on the board, score some touchdowns. 21-7, Blue Springs on top of Liberty. High V at the half. Coming your way next, you're watching the High V High School Game of the Week here on Metro Sports.
Back here at PV Stadium in Blue Springs, it's the Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week, Blue Springs and Liberty. Two teams that are rated two and three in the state poll, two and three in the Chad Harbert's High School Roundup <laughs> Top 20. Oh, sorry, you don't want it to be. Not, not just Chad Harbert. Okay, just well. Uh, Brad Porter yeah. and Mick Schaefer and Daniel Sargent and Andrew Samus, and they all have a vote, too. Okay, well, the bottom line <laughs> is these are two of the top teams in Class 6. Rockhurst is a little bit above these teams right now, but these are the two teams that want to play them November the 15th because they will play them on their home field. The winner of this district gets the home game, the November 15th game against Rockhurst. Absolutely. People are used to the every other year thing, but actually Rockhurst has to go on the road in the quarterfinals for the second straight year. There are no sectionals anymore. You go right into the quarterfinals, and Rockhurst has to go on the road because of the redistricting and because of the new classification. This is Missouri Class 6. What hasn't changed, though, Kevin, is Rockhurst once again has a fairly easy district. Lee Summit is pretty good. Lee Summit North only has one win. Joplin has only won one road game all year. Meanwhile, these four on this side are just beating the, you know, the Jesus out of each other, <laughs> trying to win the conference championship, trying to get the home field game, and then they only have to host the number one team in the city. <laughs> Let's take a look at this Class 6 District 8, and there's the point system. One of the things people have to note is Liberty only got a plus one, Chad, because of the overtime win. Blue Springs right now, as far as the point system set up, they got the plus seven for the regulation win. They call it the 13-point tiebreaker procedure. You get no more than 13 points or no less than 13 points for your district margin of victory unless the game goes into overtime and then you only get one point regardless of the outcome. So even though Liberty won last week by seven points, they're only awarded one because the game went into overtime. And if these two teams end up tied on all accounts, it can go down to those plus minus points and Blue Springs would have the advantage. But if Liberty wins and Blue Springs South beats Oak Park, this district is over with. On the other side of the coin, with Blue Springs leading by 14 and a half, if Blue Springs wins and Oak Park beats Blue Springs South, that'll mean Blue Springs South will have two losses. So that ball game next week is absolutely, uh, you know, nullified, really. And you know what's really a shame is this is the year Missouri needed to adopt the two teams out of each district policy. Kansas does not need it this year because they're having a hard time finding a second team. I mean, Shawnee Mission East at three and six or Shawnee Mission South at three and six are going to the playoffs. Meanwhile, over here, either Park Hill or Park Hill South is going to stay home. Either Blue Springs or Liberty or Oak Park or Blue Springs South has to stay home. And it's that, I mean, either Pembroke Hill or St. Pius has to stay home this year. I mean, this is the year Missouri needed to look at adding a second team from each district. Kansas did do it. They didn't quite do it right, but at least they did do it. But this is a down year for Kansas football. In fact, I got pointed out to me today, we only have one Kansas team in the top 13 slots in the high school roundup Super 25, and that's Olathe North. And that tells you what's kind of going down now. Besides Olathe North, you have maybe Shawnee Mission North, maybe Olathe East, and the rest of the Kansas side is really struggling this year in the big schools. Blue Springs not struggling tonight here at home. They lead Liberty by 14 at half. More of Hyvee at the half after this timeout here on Metro Sports.
It's cold, but that young man says, I don't mind because my cats are leading by two touchdowns at halftime. 21-7 over Liberty. It's time now to check our high B first half numbers here. Well, what we have here is uh, rushing yards. Blue Springs is doing a great job of being well balanced on the rushing and passing. Liberty has to do a better job running the ball. They're doing a good job on the pass side with that long drive that they had nickeling down and down the field. But they got to get the running, running game going and take some time off the clock, get that running game going, and put some more points on the board. Well, one of the big surprises is Liberty actually has three sacks, whereas Blue Springs has nothing. But I think that has more to do with Liberty going to the three-step and the five-step drop than it does the Blue Springs pass rush because you know Ringwood and Witherspoon can really bring it when they come up the middle. I'm not expecting so much as far as the rushing game is concerned for Liberty in the second half. A, Billy Sharp looks like he's shaken up, and you're down by two touchdowns. Don't you think they'll continue to throw the ball? Well, the, the one thing that you don't want to have is you don't want to have the Blue Springs defense knowing that you're always going to throw the ball. they got to make some runs in there, some draw plays, because that, that defensive line can pin their ears back and go full speed at the quarterback, and he's going to get a lot of hits on them. You've got to get the running, running game going and, and not put every emphasis into the pass game for the whole second half. Blue Springs marching band entertaining the whole house here at PB Stadium. The band York, yeah, cannot yeah. get on the field, Chad. Excuse me. The, the, the band is playing on the track. People are wondering why they're not spread out on the field. The field is really taking its toll from all the rain. They had a band competition last weekend. So the field, I'll tell you what, I slipped walking on the field. So it is a, really a mess. So that's why they're playing from the track here. I was going to ask you if you just